In the rear of an old sweet makers in Carpentras, Thierry Vial makes sure the production of the famous Carpentras Bilingo goes to scratch. This little transparent sweet is distinguished by its stripe of white sugar. What's a Bilingo? The Bilingo is cooked sugar, which makes them the oldest type of sweets which have sugar as a base. The Bilingo is easy to make. Is the Bilingo the same as it was in the olden days? The Bilingo has been around for 200 years. It's been made in Carpentras since 1800 by the big sweet making families from one generation to the next. In the beginning they used the syrup of cooked fruits to make berlingo, and it was this that very quickly started the berlingo of Carpentras. In the beginning the berlingo had only one flavor, mint and one color, red. Today there are five colors and five different tastes. Green is aniseed, brown is coffee, yellow is lemon, orange is orange, without forgetting red with its mint flavor. Ever since the berlingo of Carpentras began, the same recipe and method of manufacture has been followed. Everything starts with a mixture of sugar, syrup of glucose and water, which is boiled in a copper kettle. When the mixture reaches 160 degrees, it's spread out on a marble slab. The mass of sugar is folded and refolded until it starts to cool. Then the flavor and one of the five colors which give the sweet its personality are added. He takes a bit of melted sugar and to make it white he puts it on a hook and with a series of rapid movements he gets a ribbon of white sugar which he places on the mass of cooked sugar. With a few movements of his hands the sweet maker transforms the mass of sugar into a fat sausage. Copper rollers from 1850 made in a cone turn the sausage into a thin strip which then passes through a machine turned by hand which finally makes the berlingo. The Vaucluse. Danny knows this territory well, the country of stone. Here the stone is used to build everything, simple huts called borries, whose origins are lost in the mists of time. Little villages built in the shade of overhanging rocks, castles which protect the region. La perfection. This perfection. Danny respected it when he built his house. He used the stone as they would have done in the Middle Ages. The walls reflect the sure, deaf movements of his hands, his passion for stone, which for him is like a history book, where one reads the centuries, the human condition and faith. The most important thing is to do good work in a beautiful place. The people aren't important. 
I think every minute that I work, I think about the people who will live in this house. A hundred years or something like that. It's good steel, very well made and very well balanced. How did you come by it? Someone gave it to me. That was a stone cutter, the third generation of stone cutters. He was the youngest at 60 years old when he gave it to me. That's a tattoo. It's a very heavy tool, but it's very efficient. It's for cutting and reducing the stone in size, like a stone like this one here. I'm going to make an angle, for example. Here, this side. It's very efficient. Look out. Always from the inside. If I hit it like this, I'll spoil everything. It's flat. And which is your favorite tool? This one here is the most beautiful. In the sun you see all the strokes. It's marvelous, it's fine work. For example, the result is quite different. It cuts completely differently. Look, it's flat. It works like a saw. They make houses with saw cut angles. Very smooth and the off cuts are like this. So as not to spoil that, it starts to look like this. There you are. Good. Here, for example, we will break it. You make the holes here. You cut entirely with that. If I want to do something very fine in the churches or something very, very clean, only with soft stone from around here, soft stone for that. If the stone is cold, it breaks the tools. It goes fast. After when the people do the work very, very neatly, after that it's the rasp. The stone here is very soft. It's softer than that one. And after that there are round rasps for the mouldings. With this you can do a moulding, for example. An indented moulding. Danny also built this beautiful house in dry stone. 
and mortar used with discretion so that it hardly shows. This house is a very good example of dry stonework, that's to say where the stones are placed without cement or mortar. This ancient technique has been handed down by one generation of peasants to the next generation of practiced eyes and hands. The light and the sun which reflect from the stones give them life and outline their beauty, creating a harmony which blends into the countryside and preserves the place. In the village of Siverg lie a couple that used to live in the village. On their tomb is nothing but four silent stones, full of meaning, a symbol of the two who sleep here. In the Vaucluse, stones are used to pave the roads and their courtyards. They are called calades. It's not without reason he is called the poet of the stones, the little prince of the wall builders. Ça, la vraie calade That's the true ancient calade. Very irregular, with no line and stones sometimes big and sometimes, as we say, like walls. They make a coherent hole, and the stones ought to touch. They have to be grouted to the earth. The ground ought to be very solid. The moss, the lichen, the little plants, the roots, the grasses fix the joints. It gives a carpet of vegetation with stones in it. All my life I've been researching the past. The calades are a witness to this time past. In fact, I'm molded in the Middle Ages, if not earlier. When I make a calade, I have the impression of prolonging this life. The Middle Ages, that's to say there was a spirit at that moment called Mirvay, which is what I want to recreate. What exactly is a merveille? The merveille is what children dream of. That's a merveille. And calades are marvels. It's all part of the spirit of the period. You need three kinds of stones to make a paved road like this. The stone for the drain in the middle, the stone for the calade which is found in the mountains and has to be carefully sorted, and then the stones to make the edge of the steps. They are the hardest to find. It's magnificent. And the water flows down the middle. The water flows down the middle where there's a small hollow. We have a mold which we use each time to get the same profile. We tie strings from one end to the other to represent the water flow. The deposits of high quality clay in the region round App were the reason a number of ceramic workshops were started here. At the beginning of the 20th century, 20 or so workshops were continuing to produce. Today the Vernon Company specializes in tiles and is the last factory in France that works in the traditional method. So the Vernon Carreau d'App has existed since 1870. It is a totally family business which has been handed down from one generation to the next. At the beginning, the 
factory used to make roof tile. Finally, for economic reasons, they decided to stop roof tile production, and today we concentrate entirely on floor tiles. The special thing about our floor tiles is that they're made entirely by hand. We do not have machines. Everything's done by hand because we haven't found an alternative for the human hand. Mais nous n'avons pas réussi à trouver un moyen pour remplacer la main de l'homme. We're a small factory, there are 15 of us. We export four tiles all over the world. We are very proud. We have done jobs as far away as Hong Kong. We've worked for the Hong Kong Jockey Club. We've done work in a casino in Las Vegas, a supermarket in Tokyo. But we have many little clients. That's to say clients from around here, clients who want to make a kitchen or a bathroom with us. And we treat all our clients the same. So the manufacturer starts with the the clay, which is one of the treasures of our enterprise. All the clay is found within 10 kilometers of our factory. These clays that we buy are aged as much as possible because in pottery we have a saying that the more the clay has broken down, the better the result will be for what you want to do. After that, we mix the clays to get the right biscuit colors, as to say the right colors for floor tiles of terracotta. We never work with unmixed clay. These clays, once they are mixed, pass through what we call a filter press, where they are mixed with water and after we obtain large pancakes of clay which are practically ready to use, they only have to go into a mixer and then they are worked on in the workshop, which is just after where the barrow is. After that, we mold our tiles, which is the most important phase of the process. One might think it's a very technical operation, but it is, in fact, very physical. In fact, to have a good molder in the workshop, he needs at least two years of training. He has to learn that. You can't make tiles like that immediately, from one day to the next. It is possible to make 2,000 tiles in one day, but truly that's a very big day for any molder. Once our tiles are made, we go on packing them down and scraping off the excess clay. In our jargon, packing down and scraping off are the operations that make the tiles flat and easy to lay. Once these operations have been completed, we leave the tiles to dry. The drying depends on a number of factors, rain, sunshine, humidity. So it's by eye that the head of the factory or myself judge whether the tiles are ready for the oven. Then the tiles take four days to cook, counting the time for preheating, the firing time and the cooling period. Then once the tiles are cooked, they are ready for packing, but they have to be tested. If they don't match up exactly, they are destroyed or become second choices. So once they are packed, they are sent out to France and the entire world. If not, they are subjected to a second process in our enameling workshop. This is the sanding operations which tells you if the tiles are good or not. Au deuxième service, c'est-à-dire propre à être monté à l'atelier des maillages. Donc, opération de sondage, on va voir si le carreau sonne bien ou si sonne pas bien. Si sonne pas bien, il est éliminé. Si sonne bien, if it's not good, it's thrown away. If it's good, it's kept. Then they are brushed and calibrated and put on trays ready for the enameling process. À l'atelier des maillages, puisque vous avez compris que chez nous, 
You have understood by now with us, everything is beautiful, but nothing is rational. One goes a little this way or that, but it is part of the charm of the place that we don't want to abandon. Then the tiles are taken up to the first floor and given a coat of enamel, or two or three or even four. But we don't do gold because the temperatures have to be different. We always fire the tiles at the same temperature and for the same time, three days, which we find is the perfect time for good results. If they turn out good, they are packed. If not, they are destroyed. Like a hellish ballet bewitched by frenetic rhythm, the molder makes one after another entirely artisan tiles. Their skills have been handed down to them for generations, a passion for work well done, the virtuosity of the hand of man. These modest clay tiles create at the beginning of a long process which finishes in 190 different colours, in one colour or decorated with geometric or graphic patterns, countryside scenes, still life and many other themes. Not far from the village of Buisson, Claude Delton lives and works, a man who flirts with the wind and plays with the visible and the invisible. Voilà. There you go, it's turning again and all's well. <laughs> and the wind blows it in different directions. Yes, like this. It's marvellous, marvellous. It's very simple and having this, how shall I put it, reversal, you have the movements because the birds move past each other and before your eyes you have an animated design. They cross over before your eyes, you see them move. Here we are very close, but if you put them further away, you see them better. Yes, I see, it's marvellous. But it's that which is interesting, making things with a few imaginary things. The simpler it is, the more open it is. But you must have wind. Yes, well, this is the country for wind. Yes and no, in Provence the Mistral blows, but the girouette has to turn when there is very little wind. Then it is more beautiful because the weather is calm and tranquil and you are calmer too. When you have wind you are diminished because when the weather is calm you are calm and you yourself become a little larger. So if the mobile turns in still weather it's even more beautiful because it shows its suppleness. A thing which you can't see is the wind. It is there where things are beautiful. Do you understand what I'm saying? There is a girouette which is a flower. There, that's the part that turns. Um. It's a bit like the movement of man through the air and through the day like the sun. That's to say, that one is more asleep. You're in the night or in winter. There it is the south. There is the morning and there is the return of autumn. Here the girouettes are like angels, these girouettes which have a spatial notion where I have put a hint of man during the seasons of the year. It makes me smile a little. I've put a little witch there because a little witch is good luck. When the wind gets inside it, it lifts it. I'm the wind. The counterweight I always try to make it part of the design. I always try and do it without a counterweight, but that one you don't see. But that's really done during the work. Yes, metal is useful and necessary because the girouette has to work when there is a breeze and when there is a tempest. It has to be able to withstand anything. And steel allows the two opposites, light winds, and it can take storm force winds and it remains intact. 
For that it is useful for showing the invisible is there in calm weather as well as the tempest. There you are. <laughs> what interests me in the girouette is not the shape, but what it says. On one extreme there is the invisible, and on the other the visible. L'invisible à côté du visible qu'elle est quoi, parce que derrière toute chose il y a. Because behind every visible thing there is its invisible side, and that is one of the lessons I have learnt on this globe. And in the girouette, I've tried to put myself as well, in the mobile, in the movement of the wind. Good luck. Thank you.